Hi guys, welcome to uh, this lesson. Well, we're just going to be going through some questions for the summer product of Roots. Um, apologies for the last lesson, I cut it short, um, but I thought I'd just make a, a, a separate lesson just looking at uh, four different types of questions. Um, so the first example we're going to look at is if 2x squared minus 6x plus 1 equals 0, find alpha plus beta, alpha beta, 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta, and alpha b zero squared plus alpha squared beta. So this is a similar type of question that we looked at from the last lesson. Um, I did say to you that you know, the two that they'll always ask you is the alpha plus beta and the alpha beta. They'll then create some more challenging ones like the next two where you have to create them out of those first two. So let's have a look at the first two. I'm going to put the first two maybe up here actually. So the first one is our alpha plus beta. If you remember, that uses the formula negative b over a okay which in this case is going to be 6 over 2 which is equal to 3 okay so my first one alpha plus beta is equal to 3 my next one which is my alpha beta remember that the formula is c over a okay which equals 1 over 2 so you can see the very first two are quite straightforward once we've got those two answers, we can now somehow create C and D. Now C, we've already been through that one, so hopefully you remember that when I've got oh, what we write here, 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta, we're going to make the denominators the same by multiplying the bottom by beta and the top by beta, the bottom by alpha, the top by alpha. I can now rewrite this um, so we get... Um, beta plus alpha over alpha beta which you can recognize or well, alpha plus beta is 3 from part 1 or part A and alpha beta is a half I'll write that way okay and 3 divided by a half is equal to 6 okay so we've got C done now my very last one which is one that we haven't done before alpha beta squared plus alpha beta, alpha squared beta. Now with these questions, often you've got to play with them, okay? It's like doing trick identities, I guess, and just trying something. If it works out, brilliant. If it doesn't, then um, then obviously we, we, we go back to square one. We're going to start with alpha plus beta, like that. Um, and what we might do I might try to times that by alpha beta. Okay, because if that works out to be this top thing, then all I'm doing is three times a half. Let's see, see what it works out. I need to check that it works out. So alpha times alpha beta, well that equals alpha squared beta. I got my plus. If I do beta times alpha beta, I get alpha beta squared. Let's just double check that. Alpha beta squared is the first one. Alpha squared beta is, there we go, it works out to be correct. So this is true. So well, this, should I say, is true. So we now got um, alpha plus beta, which we know to be 3, times alpha beta, which is a half, which is simply going to equal to be 3 over 2, or 1.5. Okay, you once you do a few of these questions, you start getting the hang of you know, there's a couple of different types of questions they can ask. Certainly, that's one of them. Um, the fraction is pretty much always there. Um, and the other one that we, we went through the last time, if you recall, um, was doing alpha plus beta squared. Okay, and then we took two alpha beta away from it. That gave us alpha squared plus beta squared. That was one of the other common ones. Okay? Um, yeah, so have a play with those ones and see how you go. You might end up doing something and then figuring out you've gone down the wrong channel. Um, you have to go back and redo it again. Okay, my apologies. Okay, the next one there. Um, what equation has roots 1 plus root 3 and 1 minus root 3? Now this is a bit of a backwards question because what we've been looking for before, we, we've been, I guess, finding out what alpha plus beta and alpha beta is in terms of the roots. Um, in this case, we're being told what alpha and what beta is going to be. Okay, So alpha, for example, is equal to 1 plus root 3 and beta is equal to 
1 minus root 3. And there are lots of different ways to do this. You can follow the format that we've been looking at, which, I, which I'll do. But there are different ways of doing it, of course, as well. Um, we know that our equation, or any equation, will be in the form of x squared minus alpha plus beta x, and then plus alpha beta. Okay, that came from that very first introduction lesson last, or last lesson, should I say, um, where my alpha plus beta goes in front of the x, and my alpha beta, my product, goes at the end there. So what is alpha plus beta? Well, alpha plus beta in this case is 1 plus root 3 plus, that's my alpha, 1 minus root 3, where 1 plus 1 is 2, root 3 minus root 3 is nothing, so my alpha plus beta is equal to 2. So basically when I'm rewriting this, I can put the 2 where the alpha beta is, okay, and then my alpha beta, well alpha beta is going to equal to 1 plus root 3 times 1 minus root 3, which is a difference of two squares, so square the first minus square the second, 1 take away root 3, so 1 take away negative 3, 1 take away 3, should I say, is negative 2. Okay, and I'm going to put that at the end of it. Okay, which we then get x squared minus 2x minus 2, um, and we can chuck equal 0 on the end of there. Okay, so I guess there's a bit of a backwards question. Um, we're working back to get our original answer. Um, alrighty, now let's go to the very next one. If f of x is equal to x squared plus 2mx minus 6, okay, I'm just going to rewrite that so you can clearly see that. Apologies. Um, x squared plus 2mx minus 6. Um, I'm going to chuck equal 0 on the end of there. That's what, we've, that's what we've been working with. Okay, so find m if 1 root is 3. So again, when we're talking about a root, we're talking about our alpha plus beta, which is our negative b over a. We're talking about our alpha beta being c on a. There's a good chance that I'm going to have to use that, that information. Okay, the problem is in this question, obviously, is this. That's what I'm looking for the value of. Okay, I can't just chuck in minus b over a in front of my answer, or c over a for my answer, um, as we have an unknown in there, okay, that m. But what we do know, we do know what one of the roots are. So I guess what we've got, you know, if we think of alpha equals, we can say alpha equals 3, and we know that beta equals um, a question mark. We don't know what, what that's going to equal to. So let's now look at this information here. Okay, so we've got alpha plus beta is equal to negative b. In that case, it's negative 2m over a, which is 1. So it's equal to negative 2m. We've got our alpha beta, okay, which is equal to negative 6 over 1. In that case, it equals to negative 6. So, I've worked a little bit of it out so far. Okay, I haven't found out what m is, I've still got it in this equation part. But I have, um, I guess, found out what alpha beta and alpha plus beta is equal to. Now, what you might recognise that what's going to be important is figuring out what beta is, what that other beta is. Because if I know what beta is, I can put it back into this equation to find out what negative 2m is going to be. Um, so, let's have a look at the second one, because that has no m. So I know when I multiply my two uh, roots together, we know the answer is negative 6. So let's rewrite that. So we know that one of the roots was 3. The other one we don't know, which is beta. We got the answer is negative 6. So by solving that equation, we can figure out, well, opposite, opposite of times 3 divided by 3, we can figure out that our other root is negative 2. So that's quite important. I can put negative 2 up there. So what I can now do, use my information gathered. Okay, we can, I'm going to put it just here. Might do it in green. We now know that alpha plus beta is equal to minus 2m. We also know that our alpha is 3. That was given up to us in the question. We also know that beta is negative 2. We just found that out. Is equal to minus 2m. 
Now let's just solve that. Well, 3 minus 2 is 1 equals negative 2m. What's the opposite of times negative 2? Well, it's divide by negative 2. Therefore, m equals negative 1 over 2. And I have found the answer to my question. Now, obviously, if you're doing this question um, in a book, work down that page um, to make it much, much, much clearer. Okay, um, that was a tough question, guys. Oh, my apologies, this little thing keeps on popping up and I cannot get rid of it. Um, okay, my last question, and obviously going to be one of the more challenging ones. Okay, this is going to be a tough question. Um, in the quadratic equation, 2x squared minus 3x plus, plus k, we've got that unknown again, that's important. One root is double the other. Find the value of k. Okay, so this is slightly different. Last time we were given one of the roots. This time we're not given either. But what we do know, if we talk about my alpha and my beta, okay, alpha and beta, we know that one of them is double the other. So if we know that one of them is alpha, we know the other one is going to be double alpha. Well, what's double alpha? Well, it would be 2 times alpha. For example, if it was 2, it would be 4. If it was 3, it would be 6. If it was 5, it would be 10. It's double whatever it is going to be. It's times it by 2. So we've got our two roots. Although we don't know what the root is going to be, Okay, we do know that one is alpha, and we know that the other is 2 alpha. So let's go back to our formulas because that's probably where we can start and often if you do get stuck guys write this down because often it can give you some way to go so i'm going to write my alpha plus beta is equal to negative b over a i'm going to write my alpha times beta equals c on a as i said there if all else fails write those two things down you probably won't get any marks for just writing the formulas out However, if you then start using the formulas or applying the question to it, you can probably scrape a mark here or there. Okay, so let's start substituting some things in. Okay, well, we can find out, or actually before I do that, instead of having alpha plus beta, let's use the, um, the roots that we've got. Instead of having alpha plus beta, we're going to have alpha plus 2 alpha. Okay, instead of having alpha beta or alpha times beta, we're going to have alpha times 2 alpha. Okay, um, so in other words, we've got 3 alpha here and we're going to have 2 alpha squared here. All right, so let's start sub uh, substituting. So instead of or our alpha plus beta, now I'm going to call that 3 alpha. Remember, that's because one root is alpha, the other root in this case is 2 alpha. Okay, so I'm doing alpha plus 2 alpha. So 3 alpha is equal to negative b over a. Well, negative b is going to be negative, oh, it's, already, it's a negative 3. So it becomes a positive 3 over a. In this case, it's 2. Okay. My alpha beta, which we know was alpha times um, 2 alpha, which is 2 alpha squared, is equal to c on a which in this case is k over 2. Now, once I get to that particular situation, it's kind of like that last question where we want to find out what the unknown is or what our roots are. Now, obviously, this has got k in there. Um, so what we can do, we'll leave that one to the end. I'm going to work on this one here because I've got one unknown. I've got alpha. We can find that because the opposite of times 3 is divide by 3. Okay, which obviously you can do that on your calculator, um, or you can do 3 over 2 times it by 1 over 3, which is going to equal 3 over 6, which equal a half. But to be honest, if you just type that into your calculator, you get the answer. So alpha is equal to a half. So that means that alpha equals a half. So one root is a half, which automatically means the other root is positive 1. But to be honest, you don't really need to know that. Now, once you get to that spot, the is more than one way to find the answers out, value of k, um, you know, but I'm going to do it this way. So I've got alpha equals a half. So now we've got 2 alpha squared is equal to k over 2. I now know what alpha is. Alpha is a half. So let's substitute alpha into that. So I now get 2 times a half squared is equal to k over 2 
Well, a half squared is a quarter. Two times a quarter is a half. There you go. Equals k over two. What's the opposite of divide by two? Well, it's times by two. And two times a half is one whole. So k is equal to one. And look at that. I've solved it. That's a really challenging question, guys. Um, certainly when you're doing your questions from your textbook, have a crack at some of those more challenging ones. It, as I said before, it's like your true identities where you might need to play around with it and try to see if something's working. Um, and obviously, uh, if something doesn't work, then go back to square one. But I guess for these more challenging questions, what I would like you to do each time is to write this little rule out and then try somehow to apply the rule to the formula. Um, as I said, you won't get a mark for writing the rule out straight away, but what you will get a mark for, hopefully, is by applying these two rules to the equation given to you, um, and then hopefully you might then recognise something to do with the roots there as well, and that, that can help you out. Um, as I said, it's not particularly easy, okay, but certainly uh, go through some of these questions, have a practice at it, um, practice makes perfect. Anything I can help with, please let me know. Hope this was useful to you. Um, enjoy your day.